Welcome to TIA Now, the online video network for the Telecommunications Industry Association. Today, we're here at the launch of the Advanced Wireless Research Initiative, being announced by the White House and supported by the National Science Foundation. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Director of Content Development, Lamore Schaffman, and with me is Marcus Weldon. He is the Corporate CTO of Nokia and the President of Bell Labs. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Nokia Net Bell Labs is a contributing partner to the powers, to these platforms that are going to be existing in these four different cities. Why do you think an initiative like this is so important to the United States? Well, one of the foundations of Bell Labs, of course, was the idea that uh, it did research for the public good and initially part of the monopoly AT&T, but that has remained the mission for all the parents that Bell Labs has had. And the fundamental view was that great things have to be done collaboratively to disrupt or change humanity and the networks that uh, enable sort of new, new human experience, they have to be done collaboratively between all the parties uh, that have great ideas and innovations to bring to bear. So it's universities, it is commercial entities like Bell Labs or industrial research labs, uh, and also the people who operate the networks. Uh, they have a lot of experience they have to bring to bear in actually how these, work, these networks work at scale and in real world scenarios. So that whole complex, which is what the Power Initiative is about, bringing together industry partners, industrial research, academic research, uh, under the guidance of NSF with some additional funding they'll put into these platforms to complement what the industry players put in is, is a fantastic way to proceed and probably all, the way that Bell Labs has always proceeded in a certain way. So we're really glad to see this happening now uh, at such a pivotal point in our industry. And one of the things that Bell Labs is known for is its incredible breakthroughs and it's really its forethought and for leading in terms of research that is done. So how do you anticipate the Bell Labs being used as part of this research? What kind of research do you think you might get involved in? Yeah, it's a very good question. We've been working on 5G, for example, uh, since 2007. So we've been working on millimeter wave and beam forming and network slicing and low latency air interfaces. All of these things are absolutely key. And we do that actually in collaboration with university partners already. We have one of the things about when you're Bell Labs and you're 90 years old, you have probably 20,000 former members of Bell Labs that are now in academics and industry that you collaborate with. So we've been doing that for a while. But what we really want to do is now take it to the next level and on these platforms that are being created, sort of test platforms that are industrial scale, really test out some of the ideas, no longer just simulation or lab trials, but real city level industrial grade platforms that we can experiment on. Because a lot of the elements of 5G and the new services we're enabling, we have yet to discover. We have ideas, but you have to test to see whether the reality is as you expected. And in that testing, generally you discover other things. The rich history of Bell Labs is we were working on some something that we thought was what going to be the end point and in fact found another direction that we needed to take and that's how we won all those Nobel Prizes by trying to w solve an industrial problem when we actually put it to industrial test we end up discovering new phenomena new applications new services and, and I think that's what we're very excited about discovering in this process. Well, and you mentioned the discovery process. I think that's going to be really interesting. So it might skew the question that I'm about to ask. If you put your crystal ball in front of you, what do you think those networks of the future are going to look like? Well, we have an idea, uh, and the reason why we have a, a reasonable degree of clarity about this is because it's limited by physics and the speed of light. So that's the really interesting part of this. The future is going to be limited by how fast uh, light propagates, and I'll explain why that is, and, and also how much uh, bandwidth we have available. So. If you think about it, we've built networks roughly with the same architecture for 100 years. Everything sort of propagated up through a hierarchy of switches, originally telephony, now IP uh, routing networks and optical networks. But it's up through a hierarchy, across to another network, down to the other end. That's how networks are built. But that assumed you had latency on the order of 100 milliseconds, because it takes that long for the, for the signal to propagate. But now we need to build networks for VR and AR and autonomous driving vehicles. Uh, that have one millisecond of latency. And when we do that, you have to go super close because light doesn't propagate far enough. And super close, I mean about 50 kilometers away, is where all the processing is going to be done. But then, of course, there's a huge amount of video that's going to be generated by all these type of applications, VR, AR applications, cars with all their sensors. So you have to go to huge amounts of bandwidth. And that means even move the radio piece of that really close too. So the future network is going to be very close clouds, we call them edge clouds, and very close radios that are going to be a few hundred meters away from the end user. So that's what we see the future being. When we go there, of course, what will happen is, in the classic Marshall McLuhan, is technology will change what man does. He says that you know, man invents technology, 
and woman. And, and then technology reinvents what we do. And that's what we expect to find is when we go there and build those networks, we'll discover things we didn't think were possible or applications we didn't even know about. And that's, that's going to be fun. So we have the found fundaments in place. We don't know all the applications. Which is the exciting part. Which is the exciting part, That's of course. Right. Yeah. So it's usual that um, the government, in the United States government particularly, doesn't always finance these kind of things, at least co as compared to Asian, let's say, and some European countries. So do you think that this is an important um, precedent for innovation of technology here in the United States? I do. I, I think uh, European and, and Asian markets generally, the gov government gets more involved in helping the industry evolve. Whereas the U.S. approach is generally a little bit more hands-off and say the industry will define itself by competitive forces. So this is a rarity, but what I love about this is it's an accelerant. It's not actually meant to uh, replace the funding coming from uh, the private sector. It's actually an accelerant to say we're all in on this because this is so important to the future of society. And that's, I think, the really interesting part. We think we've done a great thing in building the Internet and the on-ramps to the Internet. It's nothing compared to what we're about to do to sort of instrument our world and automate everything and allow you to re learn remotely and, and teach remotely and inspect remotely. So that change is so fundamental to society that the US government has decided to get involved and I do think that's a big deal. It's the largest ever wireless initiative in the US, probably the largest ever government funded sort of networking initiative in the US and I think that's because it's about human transformation, it's about economic transformation and so we needed an accelerant to help us get there faster and that's what this initiative is. Fantastic. And so what kind of um, success metric are you looking for for Nokia Bell Labs uh, to come out of this initiative? Uh, greatness. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we transform humanity. So we, we say this is the era where we're going to create time for people in both their professional and their consumer lives. So moving around cities, they will be optimized how they move and the things they discover. They'll be able to see things remotely so they don't have to travel to those things. They'll be able to be diagnosed remotely or fix things remotely. So creating time for people, I think, is, is our fundamental goal. And if we manage to build what I call the digital fabric that allows the creation of time, I think we will declare it a success. And yeah, if we get one or two Nobel Prizes out of that, that's never bad. Marcus, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us here at TIANow.org.